All right, today is the day. As you can see behind me, we have five of the mold sections for the Airtay Supercar project all bolted together and most of the flashings in place. Anyway, in this video, we're just gonna look at that. And as we mentioned, the flashings, we're installing those according to what I call the plop method. And I'll have a link at the end of this video showing you how that system works so you can watch a little more about this whole arrangement. Anyway, this video, we're just gonna go along and see how that flashing is installed, um, see a few of the things that I've added to the molds that couldn't have been molded, at least they're a little simpler in this stage of the game. But anyway, let's go take a look and see how that was done. So putting the car together, you never saw this. I don't think I actually recorded any of the videos, but once I had all the molds ready, I drilled between all the flanges so that they can be reassembled again once they were off the car. That's what I'm doing here. I've been put the door in its position, put a bolt in the back. Now I'm putting a bolt into the front. Um, bolts all the way around the perimeter. Those bolts are put in and left kind of loose so that we can insert a flashing. Now this flashing is just made out of like a 24, 26 gauge, really light aluminum flashing. You, something you can pick up at Home Depot. It's usually a flashing used for weatherproofing. But that is uh, just barely enough gap, but you have to squeeze it in there. Sometimes you have to flex the mold a little bit to get it to fit in. Um, you can kind of pre-bend at the corners to get the radius you want, although the molds themselves are going to force what the radius is going to be. And you can do these in multiple sections. It doesn't have to be one continuous run. Of course, it's even difficult to make a continuous run on a curved surface, so uh, you'll see somewhere it actually has to be trimmed to fit a curve. That roof section done. Now I'm moving along to the kind of the A pillar. A couple of bolts have already been installed in here and cutting the flashing to fit around those bolts. And this flashing right through here can't stick up very high because I've got two pieces of flashing just like three quarters of an inch apart to get a brush or tool in there. You're gonna have to have them a little bit lower. And once it comes out between that pinch between the molds, you're going to have to lay it against the flange, which it'll just be clamped to. And I got some clamps back there. You can't see them too well. Once it's clamped in place, I got a piece sticking up. Trim it off. And some of the surfaces that need to be a very smooth turn, if you use that light gauge metal, the clamps will tend to distort it around these open flanges. So I'm using a little heavier uh, galvanized sheet metal about a 20, 22 gauge. That done, moving to the back joint of the door and the back of the tub. Now this is a radius piece, so I'm tracing off the radius so that it won't be sticking up too high above the mold so I can work both sides, both molds on each side of that flashing. And you'll also see, as soon as I'm done with the flashing between the molds, Last one on this door, of course, is going to be the very bottom of the door. And you're going to go back again to the heavier gauge, the 20 gauge galvanized metal. Like I said, that produces a much smoother edge. And then that door will be done. Except for the windows. Now, the windows are a special case because they require a bent flashing. I get a little animation here I'm going to show you that just goes through a little example of why we use the bent flashing. Door's done, let's go to that animation. Typically, we would have our mold section with the opposite projecting flange. We would then add a straight flashing and clamp it in place. To that, we would build up our lamination, creating our body part. However, in the case of our windows, we need a recess to encase the trim and a channel guide. So instead, we add a bent flashing. We built up our laminations, creating a bit of a jog in the window edge. Now with the flashing and the mold removed, we can see that we have a recessed area to install the window channel guide and a trim piece. And as the window closes, you see how that works. So here I have a piece of that bent metal. The problem is it's going to go around a curved surface in that window. And of course, now that it's bent at 90 degrees, that flashing is rigid. And so we're going to have to uh, cut it so that it'll make a bend. So I just took a straight edge, marked my curve to see how often I have to cut it. Transfer that to the sheet metal, take a pair of tin snips, clip it on one of the axes, and then 
that sheet metal is allowed or able to make the bend around that radius now. Of course, the back side is going to have those fold joints show up in the part, but they will be hidden back behind the trim. So not to worry about that. The one surface that we want, the curved surface, will be nice and smooth turn because of the sheet metal. Now these uh, have to be gauged away from the mold. So they have a specific distance they have to come away from the mold. In this case, we have a 5 8 distance to fit a piece of uh, trim and the channel the window will go into. So just check in here with my gauge. As I mentioned earlier, right before the animation, this is the piece of heavier galvanized metal. This bottom edge along the door is a uh, Critical going to be uh, visible from the outside without the help of the two pinches on the mold. So using the heavier gauge metal so it stays nice and straight. Put that in place. Now the door is done. It's time to move on to this back section. I've kept it off of this whole group because it gave me a little access easier. Wax it up. Bring it around to the side it's going to fit on. And then buff off the last of the wax. That way it will be ready for uh, spray on the PVA once the thing's all assembled with the flashings. Fit this piece in right where it locks into the tub section. Do the notches if you've remembered seeing those in previous videos where the hinges will be. Once it's in, we'll just hold it in place for a little bit while I uh, round up some bolts to bolt it together. Like I said, these uh, bolts are just tightened up just where you have an eighth of an inch gap or so between the molds. That way you can move the molds around if you need to, but there's still room to uh, press that flashing in there. Now once I've got those together, time to finish the flashing between the tub and the engine cover. Now this is a radius type radius on that rear fender, so I'm uh, having to uh, try it and fit it. Once I had the piece ready to go, try it against another piece of sheet metal, trace it out so that when I get to the opposite side, I don't have to do it all over again, but I'm ready to go there. You can't really tell in this video, but the mold's kind of tipped up at a 45 degree angle so I can access it. Once I start doing laminations, you're gonna have to be able to tip this thing about all the way to 90 degrees so it's on its edge to be able to reach all the center parts of the molds to do that lamination. But anyway, got those uh, flashings into that thing. Nothing to do but tighten that up. Now once the flashings are in place, we need to do our fillet wax. I actually use a clay. It seems to stick a little bit better. But now I've got miles worth of fillet wax or clay to do. So back to the extruder. Instead of roll 100 miles of snakes, load up about 3 pounds of clay in the extruder. Put some air to that big old cylinder. Make short work of rolling snakes. The snake gun. Okay, so the method eight, what you do is you just have to press this clay with your finger into the corners that you're trying to fillet. Now, of course, the radius on your finger is going to change with its flexibility. So once it's pressed into place, then it's a matter of coming back with a tool of some sort. Now, I have a little sculpting tool that's just a flattened wire on a piece of wood. And it has been bent to a radius that's actually larger than the finished radius, but I need to cut away a bulk of the clay to get close to what the radius is going to be. So just taking that tool, 
go on the lawn, use it running it right along against the edge of the mold and the flashing cuts all the clay away except for a minor bit of it left for the radius. And then I come in with the finishing tool, which is another tool with a little round ball on the end, which is the exact radius I need. It's about three thirty seconds in diameter. And then all that's left is a little clay on the mold. If there's some on the flashing, it's not quite as important. And if I get too much, I'll take a tool and scrape that off. But then once it's wiped down, that radius is ready. Anyway, you got to cover the whole car with those. But instead of you watching all that, I'm just going to show you some of the things I've added to these molds to make things a little easier once the parts come out. Okay, these small pieces of flashing on the dashboard here, one on each side, is just to give me a flange that will drop down and have attachments for an aluminum framework that runs under the dash, holds the door hinges, steering column, things like that. On the side, right at the corner of the front windows, this clay has been inserted so that it'll form a little triangle piece where the rear view mirrors will slot or plug into the door. Of course, we're looking at everything upside down, but we have here this piece of flashing set in at 5 8 That's where the track will be for the window that slides in and has a seal in it. As we get to this back piece here, we have the lower and the top piece around that piece of plexiglass, just 3 8 because that's just the channel for a fixed piece of window. The plexiglass is actually taking the place of where the window itself will be. And you can see I've got clay on both sides to just occupy the space where we'll have a cavity where that channel will slide in behind that glass. Now that back little uh, quarter upper window is where you call them. As you can see, I'll try to get a video here as it goes. This starts. This starts at the three eighths of the channel, but then it's going to go in. That window will actually recess more into the vehicle, and on the top where we've got this room here, there'll be a vent for cabin venting. These little pieces of clay is just to make a recess because in the end there'll be a piece of panel that will extend to take this duct back into the engine compartment. And this area right back in here will all be cut out as part of the vent. Similar, but on the opposite side, the passenger side, you'll see this little piece of plexiglass inserted. That's to give me the right thickness. That will be a little sliding door to uncover the fuel port. So that is how the flashings are installed in the molds for this plot method. Anyway, you have seen in this mold also that the molds put together all are lightweight enough that we can tip it on the side. That's the only way I'm going to be able to access these molds to put the laminations in there, at least the first layers, then they can come apart. But you've seen some of the additions to it and the things we need to work around. But anyway, I will link right here to that video that shows you how the whole plot method works. And anyway, thanks for stopping by and hopefully see you again.